There are only two stairs in this building, one straight staircase and one platform staircase, which you will create using two small straight stairs and a floor object. Since this is only a two-story building, there are no stairs on the second floor, but you'll need to create a couple of handrails for the balcony area on that floor. Let's begin with a simpler straight stair. First, with no object selected, change the fill color in the attributes palette back to white. Then, make sure you have only the design layers Floor 1 and Slab 2 visible in the navigation palette. Floor 1 should also be the active layer. Once your design layers are set correctly, set the stair tool from the building shell toolset and click the preferences button in the toolbar. In the General tab under the General Geometry, set the values in your dialog box to match the settings shown here. The ones highlighted have been changed from their default values. Now go to the Geometry tab where you will find more specific options for the stairs geometry. Again, set your values to match the ones shown here. The ones that have been changed from their default values are highlighted. Now go to the 2D Graphics tab to customize the stairs appearance in a top plan or 2D view. Just as with the other two tabs, you should adjust the settings in your dialog box to match the one shown here. Moving on to the construction tab, you can choose a construction style along with applicable parameters for each construction style. Change the parameters to match those shown in the following screenshot. Lastly, go to the Railings tab to configure the settings for the left and right handrails of the stairs. Again, set your parameters to match what's shown below. Although you don't need to use them all right now, notice that each section has an expandable list of options that can be configured for your handrail. Once you're finished configuring the stair settings, click OK to return to the drawing area. To place the stair, snap to this midpoint on the second floor slab. Then, move your cursor to the left to snap to the end point of the wall on the left. And click once more to set the stair. As you can see, the stair overlaps this wall some, so switch to the selection tool. Move the stair by its bottom left point and snap to the wall's end point. This will move the stair back a bit to its correct location. With the stair positioned properly, we now need to slope the adjacent wall to match the stair. With the Selection tool, select the wall and switch to a rear right isometric view from the view bar. Additionally, in the view bar, choose OpenGL from the Render drop-down menu. Also, turn off Design Layer Slab 2 from the Navigation palette. With the wall still selected, switch to the Reshape tool in the Basic Tool Palette and enable the first mode, Reshape 3D Walls, in the toolbar. Select the top right vertex point and move it to the bottom right corner of the wall to create a slope that matches the stair. Then, switch to the second mode in the toolbar and select the same vertex you just moved and snap it to the bottom edge of the top part of the stairs. After you've sloped the wall, the straight stair is complete. Before moving forward, return to a top plan view and set Design Layer Slab 2 back to Visible. You can now move to the top left area of a building to place the platform stair here. In the Building Shell tool set, again select the Stair tool and click the Preferences button in the toolbar. Go to the General tab and set your values to match those shown here. Then do the same for the Geometry tab. To the Graphics tab, and Railings tab. Remember, the values that have been changed are highlighted for you. Click OK to return to the drawing area once you've configured the stair properly. Now, click anywhere in this area, 
and then rotate the stair so the direction arrow points to the top left corner of the drawing area. Click again once the cursor Q 30 degrees is displayed. This is not the correct location of the stair, but this will ensure you your stair sits at the same angle as the wall. To move the stair to its correct location, switch to the selection tool in the basic tool palette. With the stair still selected, move it by its left midpoint to approximately the midpoint of the wall. These will be the stairs below the platform. To make the stairs that will be above the platform, go back to the stair tool and click the preferences button once more. Most of the same settings from the last stair will be used. But since this one will be a shorter staircase, there are still a few parameters that need to be changed. Modify the settings in your dialog box to match the ones shown in the General tab, and click OK to return to the drawing area. Now click once anywhere above the existing stairs. Then hold the Shift key and move your cursor downward until the cursor queue vertical appears. Click again to place the stair in the drawing. After the stair's orientation is set, move the stair by its top right corner and snap it to this corner of the slab. Remember this portion of the stair is supposed to be above the platform, so go to the Object Info palette and change the Z field to 6 feet. The platform, which will be a floor object, is the last part of the stair we need to create. Just as we did earlier in this project, we'll first draw the floor's 2D geometry and then convert that geometry into a floor. Select the Polygon tool from the Basic Tool Palette and enable the first mode, Polygon Mode. Once the tool is active, click the bottom left corner of the vertical stairs. Next, snap to the closest corner of the angled stair. Hold your cursor there until the Smart Point is acquired. After acquiring the Smart Point, hold the Shift key and move your cursor upward until the Cursor Q Horizontal Align H is displayed. Click to set this point. The rest of the vertices in this polygon are either along the stair or along the wall. Follow this video and set your vertices to the same locations. Once you reach your start point, the polygon will be automatically closed. With the polygon still selected, go to AEC Floor. In the Create Floor dialog box, set the bottom Z field to 60 inches and the thickness field to 12 inches. Then click OK to convert the polygon to a floor object, and you're done. In the navigation palette, turn off the Slab 2 design layer. Render an OpenGL and use the flyover tool to take a look at your stairs. Notice that just like with the straight staircase, there is a wall that can be sloped to your liking to show the stairs. To do this, we'll choose the Reshape tool from the Basic Tool Palette and select the wall beside the angled stairs. In the toolbar, enable the second mode Add 3D Wall Peaks. After that, select the top right point of the wall, hold the Shift key, and snap it to the wall at the back porch entrance. Now switch to the first mode in the toolbar and select the top right vertex point. Press the tab key twice to enter the top field in the floating data bar and input 4 feet. Press the enter key to lock in the value and click once more to move the wall vertex point. Now the stairs are done and it's time to move on to creating the handrails for the balcony on the second floor. Before you begin, return to a top plan view. Also, make Slab 2 the active design layer, and change the Layer Options drop-down menu to Active Only, because at the moment, this is the only design layer you'll need to create handrails on. Click Fit to Objects to center the slab in your drawing area. After that, zoom in on this curved portion of the slab. Currently, the Handrail Curve tool does not have an option to create 2D geometry into a handrail. So you'll first need to place arcs that match this curve, and then use these arcs as a reference to create the handrails with the Handrail Curve tool. To trace the curve in the slab, 
select the Arc tool from the Basic Tool Palette and enable the second mode. Click the topmost endpoint of the curve. Next, click the midpoint of that first arc in the curve when the cursor cue Arc appears. Then, click the endpoint of that arc when the cursor cue Arc appears once more to complete the arc. Complete this step two more times to the remaining two arcs that make up the curve. When you're finished, you should have three arcs. After creating these arcs, press the X key to switch to the Selection tool and select the first arc you created. Once the arc is highlighted, choose the Handrail Curve tool from the Fern Fixtures tool set. Also, press the Preferences button in the toolbar. When the dialog box opens, notice that there is an overall angle field in the radius field. These values will come from the arc you've selected. In the Object Info palette, the Sweep field will be the overall angle, and the Radius field from the Object Info palette will be the Radius field in the Object Properties dialog box as well. For the rest of the parameters, simply match them to the values shown here. Then, snap to the arc endpoint and move your cursor to rotate the handrail until it snaps to the existing arc. Once the handrail is in place, click once more to create the handrail. Perform this process two more times to create the handrail based on the remaining arc's geometry. Once you've created the handrails, you can select the arcs and delete them. With all three curved handrails configured properly, switch to the Selection tool, hold the Shift key, and select all three handrails. Also, change the Z field in the Object Info palette to 0 and press the Enter key. Next, choose the Handrail Straight tool from the Fern Fixtures tool set and create the last handrail for the balcony area. With the Handrail Straight tool, snap from this point to this point. This is the portion of the balcony by the stairs. Then, configure the handrail in the Object Info palette to match what is shown here. Don't forget that once the straight handrail is complete, to change the Z height in the Object Info palette to zero. And now the handrails are complete. Switch to a left rear isometric view in the view bar. Also, set the Layer Options drop down menu in the Navigation palette to show Snap Others and set Floor 1 to Visible. Now render in OpenGL to see your progress. You can also use the Flyover tool to see some other views if you'd like. At this point, you've completed the building model. The only thing left to do is create viewports of our building for better visualization of the final product.